Hey, Table Beast here. Well, uh, I just finished my first episode here of this, uh, my vlog of the PM1000 module. I hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't seen it, you know, go watch it because this will make more sense. You know, if you're, if you're wildly familiar with these modules, you know, maybe you don't want to bother. Okay, that's fine. I used to be a know-it-all, too. I mean, I'm pretty entertaining. You might just want to watch it for that. All right, so this video, since I've already given you the tour as to what this thing is stock, and uh, I, I did mention, uh, for anybody who makes any comments, this is obviously not stock. Somebody has modified this particular module before I got it, and they added, uh, instead of uh, four switches that just sent the signal to the different master sections, this actually adjusts how much goes to each master section. And it's a pretty well done mod, other than the magic marker on the as the indicator line. Um, and then there's just a few other mods that have already been done. Someone did something here on the pot. I'm not sure what. Um, and then, uh, what else? Oh yeah, there's, this has got some resistors in line. Not very, not not what I would call best practice, but whatever. So, um, other than that, it looks pretty stock. I, I don't see any, like, repairs or modifications to the actual circuit. Just in how it was being sent. Um, but I'm going to modify this thing a lot. I mean, all things considered. Uh, first off, it's coming out of this frame. Gosh, sorry. Didn't mean to be out of focus on you guys. Um, it's coming out of this frame and the circuit board and the pots and the transformer and uh, even the pot on the master fader, the funky little uh, rotary pseudo linear fader. I like to, you know, I like to do my mods the way that the Native Americans used to use uh, buffaloes and I like to use as much as I can. Uh, I like to reuse as much as I can. And I, I definitely like the look of these modules. I like the knobs. I like the switches. I even like the font and the printing and everything. And I I may keep this as far as like... I may I may try to cut the panel out and actually mount it to the face. We'll, we'll see. I'm, I may wind up not being able to do that. But if I can, I'll, I'll try to keep that. I'm, obviously, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ditch this output section because... That's all just console related. But I'm probably going to wind up keeping this phase switch and just moving it down to this end or something like that. We'll see. Well, let's discuss the mods. That's what you're here for, right? This is the mod video. So, I've uh, I've made a modification kit for this, uh, this module for years. A lot of people have used them in consoles. They've used them when they racked them up. They've been pretty happy with them, and I, I've been very happy with them. I've, I, uh, I did a whole console with, uh, with those mods before, and I really liked how it sounded. I, it turned out well. Um, I did not do a ton of experimenting when I did the original design. I just kind of did it a couple times and really liked what the third one was like. I think, I think it was like three different ones. And so that I was satisfied. I didn't really break out any meters or, you know, equipment to test anything. Just kind of used my ears and... But, you know, that was a good 10 years ago, 12 years ago now, and um, I, I, I know a bit more about circuit design, and I'm going to try to redesign this um, all, all over again, and uh, keep what I feel like was good, and kind of tweak around what I feel like uh, was not ideal. Yeah, just not, just not best practice. There were a few things I did. Now, these things weren't bad. I'm just going to not go in a certain direction. It, it, most of it's just capacitor values. And a lot of it has to do with feedback networks. Like, you know, increasing a capacitor, you know, f you know in, in the audio path allows, allows you to pass more bass frequencies, which, you know, often is a good thing. Um, increasing uh, capacitance in the, the filter sections for the, you know, for the, for the DC voltage you know, help helps tighten things up, helps helps with, with low frequency content. And, you know, one of the things I, I did not like about this, the Yamaha PM1000 stock is the bass is a little weak. I'll, I will admit it does not, 
uh, it is not my favorite thing. I mean, it's I'm not saying it's terrible or useless, but it, it doesn't it doesn't stand out as a strength. Okay. Now with the mods that I put in there, I felt like it all of a sudden was a monster on base. It really like, and that was that was part of what I of, of my design philosophy on that mod was to try to get as much base as I, as I could out of it without it without it being a negative effect, you know, no, 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 no bad side effects. And I feel like I achieved that. This one, I want the base to be just as good, but I want it to be a little tighter and a little more usable. So uh, the mods that I'm planning on this one, at least for now, you know, we'll do another one once I've got this whole thing apart and, um, and I'm actually putting it together. But so... I don't really see the use of having a high pass filter at 40. Um, 80 is fine. 80, 75 hertz. That's something like that's fine. But I think it would be more useful to have one at 80 and then double that again to 160 or, you know, 75 and 150. That seems to be the standard these days. Um, same thing with the, uh, the EQ, uh, the mid range. I feel like a 800, 1.6, and 3.2 are probably more useful. Um, that's kind of the standard. You know, maybe I'll go up to 3.6 for the, the high, high range one. I, you know, we'll see. Um, I might experiment with that. I'm going to, I'm going to look around and try to see what the standards really were for that era for the, for the more pro gear. Um, but that's just numbers. Um, what's important is I'm going to recap. Um, I was told these white caps are okay. They're old film caps, and they're I, they're probably fine. The green ones are the ones everybody hates. Um, but they're going to get replaced with Wemas, um, MKS2 series. That's the same series that I've been doing for my kits all along, and um, I'm I'm going to keep the values that I had run on those because that's a, you know, as far as the, the the numbers we were just discussing, that was what I had already designed for that. So I'm probably going to keep that. Um, you know, I may experiment a little bit. Uh, these little blue capacitors are tantalum capacitors. And, you know, when the technology was new, those were pretty cool, I guess. But film are so much better now. And uh, I've seen stuff where people talk about wanting to replace these with electrolytics. And, you know, I don't really like electrolytics in my path if I can help it. In, in, in the signal path, if I can help it. If I can put a film there instead of electrolytic, I'm going to do that. You know, obviously on an output where it's hundreds of uh, microfarads, that's not really as, as doable without a giant golf ball size capacitor or bigger. Um, but right here I can put, this is a, I believe the input one is a 1.0 microfarad tantalum at 50 volts. I'm going to replace it with a 3.3 microfarad um, at 50 volt, uh, a WEMA, uh, again, an MKS2 uh, series. Um, and then you can see throughout the whole circuit, there's a bunch of these. Um, they, they basically show you where each, where each section couples to each other. So this is where the input transformer couples to the first stage. Uh, and then this right here uh, is where it connect is where it couples is where the first stage couples to the, um, the EQ circuit. And then right here, this, uh, these three actually show you the three different paths that the output from the EQ circuit goes to, I'm not sure which order they're in. I, I think it's, I think this one here goes to the main, the main output, which is uh, controlled by the fader. Um, and then the, uh, the other two here, I believe are for the, uh, actually, I'm, I think I got that wrong. I, I'll have to double check on that for you. I don't have the schematic in front of me right now. But anyway, um, yeah, because these right here are the ones that actually go to the uh, to the, uh, the the echo sense. Okay. That's right. These are these are actually in the EQ circuit, coupling the, the different stages. And then here you've got your inductors that are part of the EQ section. And these are why everybody really I mean, besides the fact that it's a discrete circuit, this is what everybody loves. And um, those will stay the same. And then um, I'm going to recap this thing with uh, increased values on the on the rails. Um, 
I believe the biggest value they have here is like a 47. And those will get replaced with a 330 microfarad. And um, uh, one of the things I'm going to change in this new design is instead of upping the value in the feedback, anywhere there's feedback, I'm going to keep the original values because I don't want to feedback at more base because that'll cancel out more base. And it's kind of counterintuitive, I think. Um, yeah, I'm going to experiment with it. I, anyway, I'm going to keep the original values for the feedback circuits instead of increasing them. I, on my original design, I increased the value of everything. On these, I'm going to keep the original stock values of the feedback. And there's also a, a capacitor in the bypass, um, in the, um, the, you don't call it the cathode. Sorry, I'm a tube guy. Let's just, if it was a tube, it would be the cathode bypass. <laughs> um, and um, I'm going to experiment with that too, but I, I may wind up keeping the stock value on that too, because I don't, I don't think I need a bigger one there either. Again, it's not like uh, increasing the value in, in, in some of these parts before wasn't hurting anything, but it was also probably not necessary. So I'm going to go back to the stock value and see how much of a difference that makes. All right. Um, da -da 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 -da. Same thing. You know, this, this stage right here is very similar to this stage. The only real difference is that in the feedback, it has this adjustable pot um, that's on the board and is factory set. Well, I'm going to bring that out and have a pot on the face. Um, it'll probably still be a screwdriver adjusted pot just so people don't willy nilly mess with it. But I think it would be kind of neat to be able to adjust that. I don't know. Maybe I'm expecting people to be too smart to know how to work that without screwing stuff up. But I, I want it on mine. Um, and I'm going to try to figure out where the value is. Well, I mean, not try. I will figure out where the factory setting is. And then I'll have a little mark on the on the pot so that I know. If I want it where the factory put it, I can stick it there. But I'll have all the adjustment in between. All right, so um, obviously I'm going to move this pot over here next to the echo sends so that that's my main output. And then everything kind of flows correctly. Um, I'm going to move this uh, face switch I'm going to move that to the front um, before the input pad gain setting. And then these will be correct where they are. These will be correct where they are. And then I'll put the main, you know, so pretend like this isn't even here. And then this thing is going to be mounted on the box. Uh, so you have your main output here. Um, and now the, the most interesting thing I'm going to do with this design is... Although, and a lot of people don't use these echo sends um, when they rack them up, unless they use them as extra outputs. I, I have seen that before. But that's not what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to split it. So instead of, instead of the signal that, that leaves the EQ circuit going to all three of these simultaneously, I'm going to change it to where the signal that leaves here first goes to the first echo send, right? Then that will go to its own send, right? Then I will have a receive circuit that goes to echo two. Then echo two will finally feed the main output. So echo two, when it comes back, its output will, f will wind up feeding the main fader pot. And then that main fader pot will feed the, the, the line amp for the output. And then the output will wind up going to, uh, it'll, it'll split signal and go to a uh, unbalanced uh, quarter-inch output um, with no transformer, and then it'll go. It'll also go to a transformer-balanced uh, XLR output. And um, I like to do that just because there's the two different sounds. And um, just like the input transformer was a 600 to 600 uh, on the input, uh, I'm going to put a 600 to 600 on the output because that's that's supposed to be what this thing wants. Um, I'm going to test that out just to make sure for myself. I may wind up putting a 600 to 150, uh, depending on how much gain, if I'm trying to knock a little gain off of the edge, off the top, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so I'll have a split output with an unbalanced and a balanced. The, uh, the echo send and return will both be unbalanced. And that way, um, 
you'll be able to use it as an effects loop, um, which I think should be very useful. Uh, and uh, even even without the effects loop, I mean, I mean, even with no effects in the loop, I'll, I'll have a bypass that bypasses both of these, but they could also be used as drive circuits, right? So check it out. You know, you've essentially got two little boost pedals in here. So effectively, you could have your signal, it's nice and clean all through here, all nice and EQ'd, and then you send it through this, this circuit, and you can drive the crap out of it going like this, and then, you know, you could have them both just driven like crazy, and then trim it back on the output, right? Or you could have the echo send itself driving an effect, you know, maybe you've got it, you, maybe you have an effect that wants, to, wants some, some hot gain, um, or maybe you just want to use it nice and clean, you know, normally, like a normal send and return. Boring, but also very useful. Um, anyway, the, the whole idea of this circuit is to be, uh, you know, to, to add more functionality to this thing, because, you know, originally this was not intended to have a drive circuit, but it's here, and I'm not going to modify the actual circuit itself, aside from just uh, recapping it. Um, and you know, like, like I said, uh, increasing some of the cap values, but, um, yeah, so all the caps get replaced. I don't know if I was clear on that. All of them, the, the tantalums, the electrolytics, the films, even these little tiny, uh, ceramic caps that are just, uh, essentially for, uh, they're, 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 they're feedback caps that are supposed to stop oscill like supposed to stop high frequency oscillation. Sorry. I don't know why this thing. This is my phone. I need, I need a better camera, y'all. It's a brand new phone, but it still it doesn't it doesn't like to stay in focus very much. Anyway, so those are my preliminary mods. Um, we'll we'll talk more about some other modification ideas later. But uh, for now, that's it.